As we know, we have over 244 million girls out of school. And because this has really impacted us and impacted Sub-Saharan Africa as well as East Africa, the Grasa Marshall Trust looked at a program that we could do in partnership with our stakeholders so that we can be able to look at how to resolve and uh, um, provide a solution for out of girls' schools. Kenya is among the African nations that have been heavily or highly impacted by this. We know that we have poverty, negative socioeconomic norms, and all other aspects that are affecting our girls, and now they are faced with climate change. So this is even more difficult for our girls. And hence, this program for us was very important to implement. It's called the Accelerated Learning Program. It's implemented in three countries, Kenya being one of those. It's Ethiopia, it's Tanzania, as well as Kenya. And it's really looking at how do we take girls back to school. When we have challenges such as droughts and climate change crisis, it affects everyone. It affects us differently, but it affects us all the same, including the children. And through the declaration that they drafted in the past two, three days, they have provided asks and solutions. So the narrative is shifting. It's not just Africa is at a disadvantaged position or Africa is at the short, receiving the shortest end of the stick. It's actually young women, young girls, young ladies that we see. This is just a representation of many other children who were able to make it today. That's a representation of what they have been able to come up with. So we'd like to say thank you to all the generations that have come before us that are setting the pace and setting the tone so that they can lay a platform where we can have our solutions and our ideas put into practice and we can be embedded into the system meaningfully and um, have our ideas and innovations taken into account. As we all know, looking at climate change, which has to do with the shift on weather, and it is not only affecting the younger ones, but it is affecting children. Looking at the situation, we as children, we are more vulnerable. From the summit, the pre-summit, we were able to design and we were able to provide solutions, which, since we are the experts and these things are affecting us, we are the experts, we know exactly what they are facing us, what are some of these solutions, if they are being put together, it will become simple and we are going to reduce the problem of climate change. Nevertheless, grandma, audience in this room, as you can see, these are the drawings which we are able to project through creative activities which can be able to pass on information and message on the manner in which we want the solutions to be like. We need to plant more trees. We need to stop doing, we need to stop doing this, uh, this talking and more, do more actions, plant more trees. For example, in my school, Rofinfield Junior School, I have enrolled an environmental club where I'm the cabinet secretary for environment. And I advise those kids in the future, they, they also, they, they plant their age. When that, for example, when I'm turning 11, I plant 11 trees and also, I bring 11 of my friends to plant 11 trees to mark my age. In Maasai land where warriors roam, a battle is fought to bring girls home. From the cruel grip of timeless pain, an ancient practice, but it's time to change, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in agreement, say, mm. Mm. <laughs> So with courage and love, we stand as one to end the suffering and the damage done. For FGM, a practice unjust and cruel, it must steal compassion, become a, realist, a relic, a jewel. So in Maasai land, traditions run deep. We saw the seeds of change to reap. A future where girls can flourish and thrive, and thrive in a world where their dreams truly come alive. Say amen. Amen. No longer shall blades mar innocent innocent flesh, no longer shall silence conceal their distress. We gather our strength, our voices unite to protect our daughters and to defend our rights. You will protect your daughters and you will defend yes. our rights. Yes. So through education and love, we'll break the chain, a future where equality and freedom reign. For the Maasai people with hearts so grand, rise against FGM in Maasai land. So let our love be a shield our voices be a sword to protect the girls. Let our message be heard. In Maasai land, we stand hand in hand to end the suffering, to heal our land. Mm. So, thank you so much.
Grandma Grasa Michelle. I thank you so much for the work that you have been doing and the work that you're still doing, for raising a platform to enable us to express ourselves and to, to say what, you know, most of the time we have been concealed. And so right now, our silence is no longer being, it's no longer there. Thank you so much for allowing us to express ourselves, to enable us to submit our views, and you have helped us raise our voices, and we are very grateful. May the Lord bless you abundantly. The reason we partnered with the different institutions, including with the government of Kenya, to bring you together, to spend these days together, and to reflect and then to make these recommendations is because we hugely recognize your identity. We recognize that you are complete. The fact that you are young, it doesn't mean that you are small human beings. No, you are human beings in the process of thriving, of soaring. But you have so many good ideas. You have so many innovative suggestions for us. And we wanted exactly that this summit, quite rightly, the first in Africa before, I mean, a summit of climate change, that you should be there. You should be seen. You should be heard. You should be valued. Huh? We did this because we recognize you. Because we love you. And even when sometimes we fail you, but please know, we love you. I wish we could have had the opportunity for you to speak at the summit itself. So this is the beginning. We have this pre-summit. It's time. We have to fight together with those who are here. We have to fight to make sure that you say it in the plenary where all heads of states are sitting and listen to you. We have to do that because you are human, you are complete, you have so many, many good ideas which you need to tell those who lead our nations. The Grasso Michel Trust is in a process of establishing an, a movement we call adolescent movement, precisely because of that. The adolescent movement is really your space. Many of you have already a cell phone. You can send a message. You can interact with the not only the 200 you are here for two days, but you can inter interact with millions of girls on the continent. Exactly to say who you are, what you feel, what you want, what are your dreams, how do you want to be treated, how do you want to be respected, how do you want to be nurtured, so that we will have all the time, your voices guiding us to improve the institutions which we establish, whether they are public or private, and even we will take ideas which you are saying what you would like your families to do to nature you better. So we'll take it to parents, we'll take it to education system, to health system, to all the systems they have to hear directly from you without filter. We'll say, this is what girls are saying. This is what adolescents are saying. So it is really with the humility I'm here sitting, listening to you, and I know this is important for you, but believe me, it's much more important for us.